Hello everyone and I hope you're doing great. Now today we are exploring dihybrid crossing a little bit and we're looking at the different types of gametes that can be formed from specific genotype and also the possible size of Punnett square based up on the number of gametes. And so for our first example, we're looking at two parents that are heterozygous for two different traits. And so what we're going to do is to determine the possible gametes first. But before we do that, you need to remember the law of independent assortment, which explains that the T's cannot go together or the B's cannot go together. So to determine the gametes, we're going to have uppercase T to uppercase B, uppercase T to lowercase B, the lowercase T to the uppercase B, and the lowercase T to the lowercase B. All right, since both parents are the same genotype, then we know that the possible gametes are the same for both of the parents. And so here we have four types of gametes possible for each parent. And so since we have a four and four, there's a four by four Punnett square. And so it's going to be a four by four, which is 16 boxes. And so to fill out each box, what you're going to do here is to go row by column. Again, I'm going to do the first one and run through the others real quick because our focus is really on the number of gametes and also the possible size of our Punnett square. And so for this section, you're going to have two uppercase T and two uppercase B. So that will be our first genotype of our offspring. And so to fill out the rest, we're going to go through real quick. Again, just remember it is row by column. So you can go through, slow down, and also practice the others as well. And once you have the chart completed, you can also use it to determine your probability in terms of your genotype and also your phenotype possibility in terms of ratio and percentage. Now for a second example, we're looking at a parent that is heterozygous for one trait, but homozygous recessive for another trait, while the second parent is heterozygous for both traits. And so in the first parent, to determine our gametes, again, we have here a possibility of uppercase T with lowercase b, and the other possibility is lowercase t with lowercase b. And those are the only two possibilities. All right, and so we have two types of gametes based upon this genotype. For the next parent, we have here, again, based on our previous example, um, since both traits are heterozygous, then we're going to have four possibilities here. And so the first one is uppercase T, uppercase B. Then we have uppercase T with lowercase B. Then we have lowercase T with uppercase B. And then the last one is lowercase T, lowercase B. And so this is for types of gametes. Now, this is saying now in terms of our size of the Punnett square is two by four. So we should have eight boxes. All right. And so again, to fill these out, again, you can always slow down and check the combination row by column to make sure that you understand the combination for each section or each box. All right. Row by column. And we want to put the like alleles together to make it appropriate. All right. And so this will be the result here. Now, let's jump into another example. So let's say one parent is homozygous recessive for both traits. And the next parent is heterozygous for one trait, but homozygous dominant for the other trait. And so therefore, in terms of the first parent, the possible gametes will be only lowercase t to lowercase b. That's the only possibility right there. So we'll have one type of gamete. And so for the second parent, we could have either uppercase t with uppercase b or lowercase t with uppercase B, and so here we have two types of gametes. And so this is a one by two, so therefore it is only two boxes in our Punnett square. And again, to fill them out, again, row by column, so we'll have those are the possible genotypes for the offspring. A point to note, you can always expand this in terms of making it 16, all right? Now, the next example we're going to look at here, um, again, one parent is homozygous dominant for one trait and homozygous recessive for the other trait, while the second parent is homozygous dominant for both traits. And so our gametes, again, in this 
um, first parent, it's only uppercase T with lowercase b. And for second parent, is only uppercase T with uppercase b. And so for first parent, we only have one possible type of, of gamete. And for second parent, we only have one possible type of gamete. So Punnett square do not need to be 16 or 4 by 4. It simply could be just a one box. And so this will be our result right here, which means the, the genotype for the offspring is homozygous dominant for one trait and heterozygous dominant for the next trait. All right, so I hope this was really a helpful lesson for you and actually help you to understand how to determine your number of gametes and also the size of Punnett square that is appropriate for whatever you're doing. And so I want to thank you for watching this lesson, and I want to remind you that life is simple, so you should not complicate it. Have a wonderful and blessed day, and I will talk to you soon. Take care.